Good morning, everyone. And in general, when we're talking about the song that describes the view of, of Dzogchen and of Mahamudra, generally you all have come here. You have great faith in the Dharma, and in particular, you have faith in this Dharma, in, this, uh, in the experience of uh, realizing the nature of the mind, as some of you have, or even if you haven't realized it, you have great faith and devotion in the, uh, that you can and that you will be able to uh, uh, realize this nature of the mind. And the main thing that we need in order to do this is faith and devotion. We need to supplicate with the lamas, uh, the lamas with faith and devotion. And so that is why we always recite this Vajradhara lineage prayer. And so as we do recite it today, please have great faith and devotion in the root and lineage lamas. Oh, <laughs>
Tene Tatanda Kasing Kapsula Tatitang Jagaraji Yoldo Sempe Tunta Tawa Mandawa Tunta Chimbu Ye Tene Tejendo Pedo Sempe Chulu Tatanda Nyam Juba Mandawa Tatinzu Gumbate Tate by Imbata Tene Tenji Wondo Siena Tenzo Gumbate Do Papa That in the Gordi, Juparela, Tene, Tatanda, Taringa Cups, Chiati, Galoatar, no Salvas on the order. Taji, Gumbati, Mandrawa, Mandrawa, Jongiore, Tizzi, Ripig, Tarandini, Tene, Tanda. Take it like go yard now, John. You are at la Tene, Tate, Yendo, Numag, Logigon, the Siena, Tenite, Tate, Gardan Raboya, Capca, John, you are eh? Gardachum at the Carri de Siena, Tachetang, Children, Consort number Niganani, Tene, Consort Susug, Tene, Jan Latin, Cachi, John, you are cigarette. Tening around Tom Pichu on the Siena Till and Gardan Rock, but Tende Kaya, your Marilla. Tiendo Tanda Goyot now, Tia, Tati Gitilla, Tene Susu, Tumo Maimbe, Nengore, you are a pernas, Nicassin Hubayan, the Nintu Sierra Navata, Dodepa, Sam Zampa, Tinsuke, Mikwing, Nengona, you are a la. Tietopa, Laya, that culture of the Gubachim, you are la. Tini Tartuk Nelu Toba Laya Tangaranzo um Korwatum Yen Sonli Trollni Tarbatum Tom Jin Chimbe Compondo Bishadula Guba Chimbo Yuare Latini teacher na tietardo temba insari. Yesterday we discussed the different types of uh, philosophical schools, the views of the great philosophical schools that appeared in India, as well as the uh, different lineages and dharma uh, and dharma traditions that arose in to Tibet. We talked about how they might seem to have different presentations, different intents, but if you actually look at it, they all come down to the same thing. So that's what we talked about yesterday. Today uh, we will be talking about the fourth section here on page 18, Dispelling Seeming Contradictions. Uh, and so all of these different schools seem to have different thoughts. They all have different intents, it seems. But uh, this is just the different strength. Uh, and because of the strength of the logic, sometimes they're refutations of each other or are proofs of their own. And also, if we look at it in terms of history as well, in history it does, uh, there are stories of there being conflict between uh, the different uh, traditions. But we have to remember that there are two things here. There's the Dharma and there are the individuals. And so any conflicts and so forth, these are the problems of the individuals. Uh, they come about because of the individuals, not because of the Dharma. Actually, there is no reason to have any uh, different conflict, uh, any conflict between the, between, the, uh, between the traditions. And so when we look at the, uh, the refutations that we have, the refutations are often, what they're actually doing is they are setting aside the particular presentation of that particular uh, uh, view. And there are particular points that come up in each of the individual views. Like yesterday, we talked about the Great Exposition, the uh, Sutra School, and the Mind Only School. And each of these has their own particular points uh, that, uh, they pre that they present. All of these points are very helpful and they're very useful. Ultimately, all of these uh, uh, views are things that can free us from samsara and can bring us down uh, to uh, bring us to the ultimate result of in, uh, omniscience. And so that is, uh, that is how we should understand them all. That is why there are these different schools. Tene, Tatea, Tao, take on to Sinti, so na, and don't need Lula, come back to them. Samu Nesson de Mato Yen say, Co Chetola Mugu Mala, Portus on the Zepper and 
ตาเตจิตันดาคาสิงกุมบันตุบากุนตุเชนะอ่าทีนี้เนลุกตันกุมบันมันทิมบยอมมาเรลากุมบันมันทิมบยอนตุเชนะสุสุกตาวาเตล
listen to this, they, they meditate upon it, and through following, uh, and so they, they uh, combine the instructions on this with uh, their meditation, and in this way, uh, do their uh, practice. So each of these has their own way of doing practice that they, uh, of their own way of practicing that they bring into the path. And so making, uh, just making refutations of other school is uh, being little accustomed to the nature. That's what little accustomed um, here means. It means that, so here it's those people. So these people who are little accustomed to the nature might not realize the secret point of the pra- profound. They may not have really seen the uh, actual secret points, the real nature of uh, profound uh, nature. And so this is what Mipam Rinpoche is saying. It is also exactly the same as what uh, John Rinpoche Dorje uh, says in his song. And so uh, it's possible that the presentation that Mipam Rinpoche has made in this song of uh, the view that it was, it's, uh, uh, it, it's not that he's saying here, oh, you haven't understood this, you don't realize this, you're just kind of stupid and don't know what's going on. That's not what he's saying. I am not being disrespectful respectful uh, view, but rather it's just establishing his own particular uh, view. And so if this strikes a nerve, I beg your pardon. So if you feel like this is harmful or this has uh, harmed you in any way, I beg your pardon. Please be patient with it. ตาเปจิปุจุงโลจุนดอกจิเรละทุตรวาจิปุเตเปกโลจุนดอกจิเรละทุตรวาจิปุเตคุนลายุทุตรวาจิปุจุงยัวเรละทีนี้เตตาร
And so the next point is uh, is uh, about how when we realize this view as it is, there is great mental ease that develops. We feel very comfortable and easy um, about this. And so, uh, there's, so it's through the condition of developing profound realization, the mental ease of contemplating the pure scriptures. And so this is a really wonderful sense of ease, excitement, and joy that happens when, uh, when we realize this. Mipham himself also experienced this joy. Everyone who practices this, all the students is, who are practicing, if they practice this, then in the future they will be able to develop the same joy and delight about this. And so, um, as uh, it says here, although I have not realized ati. So ati here is uh, the uh, when we develop the realization. There, there are many different methods for this, as we described yesterday. We study the uh, uh, we study the great the philosophical text. We develop the view, and then we develop. And first, we have an understanding from which we gain real certainty. Uh, and then, at the same time, uh, that we don't just leave that understanding and that certainty as it is. We also do our practice. It's not enough to just maintain that inferential understanding of uh, looking outside. We also need to combine it with the real experience with our practice. And when we do, if we do that, then we will be able to at- achieve the same joy and delight. And so here he's talking about how he uh, how he also had this experience, uh, had, how he also had that sort of experience. And so as it says, although I have not realized Ati. So in the presentation of Dzogchen, there are the nine different vehicles of Dzogchen. There are the three common vehicles of the listener disciples, the uh, Pratyaka Buddhas or self Buddhas and the bodhisattvas. Then on top of that, there are the three inner tantra, outer tantras of the, uh, or the three lower tantras, excuse me, of the, uh, of the uh, action tantra, conduct tantra, and yoga tantra. And, and then above those, there are the three higher tantras, the maha tantra, the anu uh, tantra, and the ati yoga tantra. And so uh, these are all a path that we can train, these are all paths that we dra- train in gradually. And so when we um, do this, the pinnacle of all these vehicles is the ati. So the pinnacle means the best, the highest, the, the, the first point. And that is the Dzogchen of ati yoga. And so this is a very profound uh, practice. It has real important points that we need to realize. And so uh, Mipam Rinpoche says, although uh, he says of himself, although I have, have I really realized all of these points as they are? He says, he hasn't really realized them all, but he's been very uh, fortunate. And so through, with faith, diligence, and full knowing, I am skilled in riding the, fi- riding the fine stallion of the ancestral uh, scriptures. And so the uh, ancestral scriptures uh, here are the scriptures that come from, it's like an example here, or an analogy. We have the, our parents, and then our parents' parents, and the parents' parents. And so similar to that analogy, we have the instructions we've received, we received from our root lama. And the root lama received them from his or her root lama, who receives them from their root lama. We have all the lamas of the uh, lineage, from the uh, the Dharmakaya Vajradhara all the way down to our our precious root lama. So uh, all of them have uh, uh, understood the view as it is, and they've been able to uh, practice it. And out of practicing it, they have uh, uh, they have developed great love for sentient beings, because of which they have taught uh, the scriptures, the um, 
Uh, so these are the scriptures of the philosophy, the scriptures of the different sciences, the instructions, the advice, uh, and the different songs. They've taught many different scriptures. And so um, if we look at those properly, if we realize, if we can see what they're talking about uh, properly, then through their uh, kindness, we will be able to develop realization. Tinne <laughs> Teacher <laughs> So when we study these scriptures, then we study them through uh, listening and contemplation, we study them through our meditation practice. And here, the analogy that's given for them is of a stallion, the fine stallion of the ancestral scripture, so a stallion or a horse. So now at the time that Mipam Rinpoche was t uh, teaching this, and in the place that he was teaching it, he was in uh, probably in the area of Tibet called Golok. And Golok is a place where they're really good horses, really great <laughs> horses. And so he used, you know, a good horse as an example. But nowadays we don't ride uh, horses so much. And so now the better example is of a car, a really nice car. <laughs> you've got a really nice car and you've got a good driver and you're going to get where you want to go nice and easily and comfortably and happily without any difficulties. You'll get there quick, it'll be great, and it's really wonderful. So it's like you have the good stallion or the good car. And maybe these days, you know, for the good car, you'd say, what would you say? A BMW. <laughs> a nice BMW. A really wonderful to drive. Actually, the Dalai Lama said, you know, it's, you know, when you have a nice car like that, then you get really worried about it. You're afraid... <laughs> Oh no, you know, like, this bug is going to make a mess on my windshield and I'm going to have to clean it off or something like that. What am I going to do with that? And you have too many worries about it when you have a nice car. But in any case, something that you can ride comfortably and well. So here, the, uh, the, uh, the, good, the good horse, you're riding the good horse. And so he, it's like he's, uh, he's skilled in riding the fine stallion, so he knows how to ride it well. Tinita <laughs> Hirapton 
ตินี้ฮิชิเปเตปาเตทาเตลามาติกตินเดจิกองกุเรซุงกุนตุเตทาเปสะตินนะกองนะเปเพ่งโทกุเรซิกตุตินงุนีอีนะจินทาติกองน
Jane to watch it now. The need Jit of Jacobs or Lion, Yancey, Yancey, the name Metamal Banangi, my imba, Yancey, Yancey, the name Tane Lugatan, the Saint Cor, Tom Bichitan, the Saint Corne, Tembatan Higin, the need to Jundo, the name my Sante, no ink on the Major Wache, Tapen and Ranson Jitting is our ship, a cavi and Nayandra, Tigasol, no ink on the Major Wache, Sepatella, the name. ตอจุจิเซนดูสิเนี่ยยมกะตุจิตุทําจิเจกาสอลเซมาอีบาตาตินเดงอนะเซนทุบนาตินเดเปเลลาวยอเรเบซินาเลลาวยอมาเรเต
uh, mindfulness that doesn't forget what we're doing. And then when we are in the post-meditation, we uh, don't let ourselves get distracted or overcome by, uh, by distractions. And we just uh, th- uh, should just keep thinking about what is the nature of things like? What is the Dharma? What is the meaning of this? And just m- continually maintain uh, this mindfulness and awareness. And we should not let ourselves be overcome by distractions. When we do worldly things, we should try to make sure that we are not distracted from, uh, from our meditation or from the uh, Dharma at that point. And so this is the continual diligence that we need. Uh, and so uh, we need to have this continual, continual diligence both when we are doing the, the even resting of meditation and also in uh, the post-meditation phase. So is this easy to do? Maybe not, but if you keep trying to do it and you practice at it, then as much as you can be diligent about trying to do this, then it will just get better and better. And so here, Mipam Rinpoche says that there are three things that we need, three causes for developing realization. There's the first is faith, the second is um, diligence, and the third is full knowing, or prajna is the Sanskrit word. You could also just say intelligence. Um, and uh, of these, the third of these, this intelligence or prajna, this is uh, when, we, when we're doing meditation. We have two different types of meditation that we do. We have the shamatha meditation and the insight meditation. Or if you think about it in terms of the six paramitas, we have the fifth paramita of dhyana or meditative concentration and the sixth of prajna or this intelligence. And uh, so of these two, when we are thinking about it in terms of the practicing the meditation, you know, if we're doing tranquility meditation, the shamatha meditation, that's just, or, if, or just the, uh, the, uh, the dhyana meditation, that's just our mind not being distracted, just naturally staying there without many thoughts happening, not following after our thoughts in a sam- samadhi. Now, at the point when we're doing that, there's really not actually a whole lot of this prajna present then. Uh, there's not a whole lot of that real clarity uh, there at that point. And so we need to develop that. And so when we develop this, we have the, the prajna, the, the intelligence that comes out of uh, hearing, contemplating, and meditating, it is said. And so when we are um, doing our practice, what sort, of, uh, what sort of intelligence, what sort of prajna do we need? Well, uh, there, is the, there is the prajna that comes out of really fully comprehending the view through uh, inference and the intelligence that comes through fully comprehending it through uh, the direct perception of meditation. And so when we are coming to developing the, the intelligence that comes out of fully comprehending it through uh, inference, then, uh, then, so, then we can understand that all phenomena are emptiness. We can uh, meditate on why th- all things are emptiness. This is uh, emphasizing the expanse. And so when you talk about the expanse, this means like the emptiness. We can understand why all things are emptiness. And yet we can also see that there is wisdom, there's the clarity that is part. And so it's the union of the expanse and wisdom. So the expanse is the aspect of emptiness and the wisdom is the aspect of the clarity, the knowing, the continually knowing. And so if we remember this nature of how the mind is over and over again, and then we uh, can uh, practice on them. We can develop a real certainty in that through the logic and influence and then on top of that we can then on that basis we can meditate. So that is really coming to really comprehending, can, can comprehend and fully internalize the view through, um, through the inference. And then when we are developing the view through, uh, through fully comprehending and internalizing it through direct perception, that is when we are doing the um, Med- meditation practice, and then when we, when we're doing the meditation practice, and we look at the mind, then there is the the emptiness of all phenomena, the nature of all phenomena, the dharma datu that is talked about in all the treatises and in the Madhyama constructions, and then there is the way that our mind just actually is, and these two both come down to the same thing, and so if we can sort of nurture that the essence of that and sort of look directly and see directly how the the way that that is, then we develop the intelligence that comes out of it, the progen that comes out of it. And so we have the uh, direct perception and the um, 
and the inference. And we can meditate upon either of these to develop the intelligence or the full knowing. And so we have these three things that we need. We need the faith, that's the first. The second is the diligence. And the third is this intelligence or prajna. And so we need to be skilled in riding with these. Dini, Tatiela Dini, Tatin Jevutela, Jetanga, Jevute, Tanguni, Parchipa, Yapuja, Tinite, Tate, Tate, Long Home Majumaji, number New Yorela, Tinane, Tapa, Tate, Long Home Majuma, the Majuma, Tinne, Yapo, Neck up Jumare, Sumadela, Tangaransoya, Tetardo, Yamnici, Picapsula, Long Home Majuma, the Maimba, Long Home Juma. The Tiny Tene Tinani And so when we, when we ride this uh, stallion with faith, diligence, and full knowing, well, uh, when, when we come to the result, you know, uh, is it gonna, what is going to happen? Uh, is it going to work well? So he talks next about how it, how, how it goes. You know, either when we do this practice and do it, either it's going to work out or it's not going to work out. And so, you know, if it doesn't work out, then it just hasn't worked out. But if it works out, that's what we want to do. If our practice goes well, it's going to uh, work out. And so what we want is for things to work out. We want to be able to, for, we want the result to be, we want it to be able to happen so that we attain uh, the result. And so here, what he calls, you know, the things when it, when it isn't, just isn't working out, that's knowing all while blocked in one. So you know a lot of different things, but you aren't able to actually practice. And so because you can't practice, you can't really, uh, you don't really get the result that you need. You might be able to say, oh, this is good, that is bad. That is like this, this is like that. And you know all these different things, but when it actually comes down to the important points, the important instructions that are actually gonna help your mind, you aren't able to practice them. And so that is knowing all while blocked in one. You know a lot of, uh, you can say a lot of different things, you know a lot of diff different things, but it don't help you at all. And so what is it that you actually need? Well, you need to uh, know one and be freed in all. And so, um, uh, so 
so you don't want to be know everything and be blocked in one thing. You want to be know one thing and know all. So if there's that one main point that you know it, then that will help you in everything. And so if you know that one main point, and then then you you know that one point, and you realize, oh wow, I can, if I know that by knowing that point, I can uh, free myself from the afflictions. I can develop all of the qualities that need to be developed. I and in ter- so that's in terms of helping myself and in terms of helping others. I'll actually be able to do something for other people. I'll actually be able to bring benefit to other people. Whether I bring benefit by teaching the Dharma to people, whether I bring de- benefit uh, by, uh, by practicing the Dharma, whether I bring benefit to people by making aspiration, uh, uh, so I'll be able to do things that will really help people in their minds. So these are the two things that, that we can have, the knowing one and being freed and all. And so here uh, through uh, Mipam, through uh, the first through faith and second through diligence and third through the prajna, uh, was able to come to this place. Through training uh, his mind, he was able to come to a result. And what was that result? Did he, was he able to actually realize Dzogchen in its entirety? He did not re- realize Dzogchen into his entire, entirety. But as he said, I've escaped the chasm of knowing all while blocked in one, and have come to the plane of knowing one while freed in all. And so he's come to the place where he's uh, uh, known the one thing and is able to be free in everything. This is a wonderful uh, result that he's attained. And so for that reason, he has great joy and delight in his mind. So this is the cause of developing this uh, joy and delight. ปอปันรบุจิกังกุรติสวนยินดูทีนี้จิตังมิกซัลเกอ่ากอมจับดูอินเดซีกองกุรีสิงกินรบุทินเดชิดอสกอมทิกรบุญุทิกรบุทินเ
Tini, Tati, O Parra, Town, Capsula, Ranga, Gewata, Dewatin, the part, Jimbata, Samba, Chitan, Samba, Sambola, Samba, Sambo, Kumu, Chepper, Chilla, Chiavato, Dodgins, and Pompe, Chetta Latin, Tail, they do only give me part of what in the Nani, Gonna, Be, Lit, Tombo, Kumu, Tupic, Chetta Latin, Tipe, Yapo, you be already. And so this is, you know, the joy and delight here is really coming out in the song. Uh, he's giving an expression of his joy and delight. And as I uh, said the other day, in the song of the view, he's talking about how we can develop, um, uh, develop realization. And when we develop, we can have the confidence and the, the courage that we can do this ourselves. Uh, ourselves. He himself developed that realization and through developing that he felt the joy and the excitement. And because of that, he developed the confidence and the courage to be able to uh, write this song. So here, this is a song of the view. And when it talks about the actual way that we meditate, it doesn't really say, okay, now first you do this and then you do that. It doesn't really give you know, the experiential instructions. It's not an exper experiential instruction uh, manual on meditation. It's, it's, saying, it's giving the view of it, the view of how to look at the mind. It's saying basically if you meditate and you have this view, if you realize this view and then meditate, then you will come to this uh, sort of result. So when we start thinking about, well, how do we actually practice, it really isn't all that clearly uh, taught right here. So I thought that I would uh, say a few things about this uh, today. And so the first thing is about the posture that we sit in. And when we sit in the posture, uh, then often we talk about sitting in the posture of the seven points of Verochana. Uh, and so if we can, and this is a, a wonderful way to sit, but there are different ways, that people have different bodies. They're on uh, different types of bodies. And so some people can sit in the seven-pointed posture of Verochana extremely comfortably, and other people it's just a terrible and uncomfortable, and you can't sit in it. And it's, uh, if you can't do it. And so does that mean if you cannot sit in that seven-pointed posture of Verochana, does that mean that you have absolutely no chance to meditate? It does not mean that at all. <laughs> Actually, if you can meditate sitting in the seven-pointed posture of Verochana, uh, then that is wonderful. But if you can't, then the important thing, the, the main points are dealing with the mind. So as long as you can sit with your body straight, so you sit with your uh, sit with your body straight. Uh, how uh, however it is on something comfortable, you can sit with a good posture, and so uh, that is the points of the posture: sitting comfortably with your body straight. And then in terms of our mind, there's our mental uh, motivation that we have. And so the, uh, if we first start out with the motivation of bodhicitta, it will be great. Uh, and so we need to have the vast motivation, the vast motivation of bodhicitta. And in order to, to habituate and meditate upon that, it's often very helpful to follow the instructions from the mind training, Lojong mind training teachings on doing the visualization of Tonglen of giving and taking. And so uh, here we visualize that as we breathe out, we breathe, uh, or as we breathe in, we breathe in all of the suffering, all the pain and all the difficulties and all of their causes that all experience beings experience and we uh, take them upon ourselves as we breathe in. And then as we breathe out, we visualize that we are giving away all of our happiness and all of our uh, virtues. And through meditating in this way, we're able to develop a real kind heart, a good motivation. We're able to decrease our egotism and our cherishing of ourselves. And so if we do this uh, visualization of the Tonglen, of giving and taking, uh, suffering, uh, 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 giving it, taking uh, happiness and suffering, then this can really help us uh, transform our motivation, and it is really wonderful. Tetapa 
Tini nepe ngota, nengking ka ngota bota, alata, ne tup na, ne ma tup na, tini nam tup mambu ntua na, nam tup njui ka ngota, tini nam tup njengking ka ngola, tani, tini tige, senti ka ngoti, tani, ta tindi se gom na ya, pe nyamni ya po yungkere la, Tini tela tini rimbi kompil tundo wa yapu yungri war. Tini tiki ndo cherem ka ngom tisi na ta tan 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 ala kashi ta pang kinri zi ka gom tisi ng kinra po ta doji simpa gom di nang kinra po ta sangji mel gom di nang kinra po. Tini tiki ndo doji pamu ka nyamli nang kinta tini ta tiki ndo kolo denchu la sopa tini tiki ndo doji purba la sopa nyamli nang kinri yore la. Tini tenzu ki nyamli nao kapsa la tangpo cherem gom pa kapsa la cherem gom. Tini ti cherem ti gom ni, tini ta cherem ti trup ni, ti jyuk tana la. Ta jinshir ta nyamli kanka la. Tini zorim ke gom di ji yore la ta ti la tenzu surdo ni. Tini tongi ki ngundu nyambar yo, tongi ki ngundu nyambar yo pa kapsa la. Tini ta cherem ka la tenzu surdo ni. Tini rang ka tongi ki ngundu nyambar yo, di tongi chongpa maing pa. Tini ti tongi te, tini tongi yin sampan rapo maing pa. Luzu ki tongi maing pa. Tini ngarang ka senji ngowa la ta na, senji ngowa rang hinji salwata, ngowa rang hinji tongpa sal tong song tunji pa neta ti ka. Ta indo ngowa chong. Tini tini te ci gom, tini te te ci gom ba te yang tang bu yeng tong, tini per na tanda sen ni pe tap goi nung ni sa man jokpa sung di yore, jokpa sung di te ci gom, tini te jundun jokpa si di te ci jeng reng to gom, tini tanda tindi si ni yeng reng, si yeng reng, si gom na, tini rimbi ke sal to nro watang, te yeng to nro watang, Jerem la tini gomba tinsu ya pun rogi yore la tindi si gomna ya pun yung kere sombre. Then we can do shamatha, the tranquility meditation, just meditate without following our thoughts. And so for the time being, you can use a, um, a focus for your meditation, a reference, uh, like you can use as the focus, you can use the breath, the breath going in and out and meditate on the breath as it goes in and out. Or uh, if you don't want to do that, otherwise you can also just let your mind rest, uh, let, let it rest peacefully and calmly, let it relax in that. And then when you're just loosening and relaxing in that, letting it be, then at that point um, there's, this, there's the aspect of th that it's just resting there. And when it's resting, you can then look at what is the essence of the resting. What is the essence of the one who is resting? And uh, if you can stay there, and if you, you, great, you can maintain that. Or if you can't stay there then, and thoughts occur, then you can look at the essence of the thoughts that are moving. You can look at the essence of the one who's moving the thoughts, of the one who's doing the thing, thing. And you look at the essence of the mind in that way. And if you can do this, then this is really a uh, great practice to do. And as you just do it, then gradually it'll just get better and better and clearer and stronger and more stable. There are also quite a few of you here who are doing various creation phases, that is visualization uh, meditation. Some of you are doing the Chen Rizik, the Avalokiteshvara meditation. Some are doing Vajrasattva meditation, or maybe you're doing the Medicine Buddha medita meditation. Some of you, there are also some of you who may be doing Vajrayogini, or Chakrasamvara, or Vajrakilaya, or whatever sort of uh, practice you are doing. But w for whatever practice you are doing, uh, then when you first do the uh, practice, you start out with the visualization practice. You do the visualization practice, and then at the end of the um, uh, practice, uh, at the end of the practice, then um, the at, at the end of the, when the whole practice is ended, then you do the dissolution phase where all the deities of the practice then dissolve into yourself and you dissolve into emptiness. And then you can rest in equipoise within emptiness for a few minutes. So the, when you rest in emptiness, when at the end of the creation phase you dissolve all the deities, the whole visualization dissolves into emptiness. At that point, it's not just a question of just merely meditating on emptiness. It's not a question of thinking, everything's empty. 
it's not thinking like that. It's actually, and it's, not sort of some, it's not some sort of conceptually fabricated idea of emptiness. Instead, you should look at the essence of your mind, and you should see, you should look at the, the emptiness and see, 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 see the nature of the mind, see that it is clear and also that it is empty. See that these two are unified, that it is the union of the clarity and emptiness. And then if you can sort of nurture that, um, rest in it for a few minutes. When you do this at first, of course, for the, uh, at first it is for a very short time. It's like we talk about with the nine methods of resting with the mind. The, the first method of resting the mind is just, to, is just resting. And that just means to rest the mind for a very short time, a, a little bit. And then there's continually resting, which is just to sort of extend that a little bit, just make it a little go, go a little bit longer. And then you can just extend it longer and extend it longer and keep extending it. Uh, and as you do so, the clarity will get stronger and it will grow more stable. And if you meditate in this way, then your, then your creation phase, your visualization meditations will go uh, really well. And this will really help your meditation develop. <laughs> Narange Shujula, Tanda Chitang, Naranzo Corso, Tene, Tela, Tanda Bog, Mutise, Tene Tejendo, Shalin Nankin, Tenzu Kodi Yapose, Makanga Pesha Yaposta, Tene Tusam Yapona, Nyoni Yapona, Tene Tanda Group Interview Capsula Tua Yapona. Tandachuntinpeyapuchongsongsambadabuchongsongatinpeyapuchongsongatinpeyapuchongsongatinpeyapuchongsongatinpeyapuchongsongatinpeyapuchongsongatinpeyapuchongsongatinpeyapuchong
ที่เชิญนะตั้งแต่งานสัมมนาคมลุมบาลัยนั้นตั้งแต่คริสตันที่สายเอ็มบาฮินดูเดียวละดูขันจีพูดนะญี่ปุ่นเดาสัมพันธ
And this Dharma activity, even if the temple, um, it, uh, even the te- temple falls apart into ruins, it still is doing Dharma activity. Of course, when the temple is alive and vibrant and flourishing, then there is, of course, a lot of activity that happens. But even when uh, it's uh, destroyed, there's still Dharma activity that's happening. It's like Nalanda. Uh, when we go to the, the, monovers- um, to the monastery of Nalanda, this is a place where the Dharma flourished for many years. There are many great scholars and masters there. They're the six ornaments of the world who were at, um, uh, at Nalanda. But now they're all gone and it's all been destroyed. There's nothing left. A few walls, foundations, you know, uh, uh, some pathways here and uh, there. But even though it's destroyed in this way, when people go there, you think, oh, wow. In the old days, this must have been just incredible. Think of all these people who are practicing. This is the place where the six ornaments of the world uh, taught the Dharma. It really encourages us to feel, it inspires us to feel faith and devotion in the Dharma. When we Tibetans go there, we think about this and we sit there as saying, how do you say it in English? On the on the foundation of the earth, sprinkled these are sort of sprinkled with water and strewn with flowers, adorned with these mountains and mountains and all this. We make the Andala <laughs> offering uh, like this, and we pray and we make and we consider this to be really uh, important. So we it really inspires us to a lot of uh, faith and devotion. So here in America, in particular here, Crestone is a really isolated place, and I th- I always thought you know if there were uh, a retreat center here, this would be a really great thing, but I myself am not really able to do everything necessary uh, to get it uh, together, so you know, I've encouraged my students to uh, do this and as a place, and so it's a place where pe- the students have helped and really uh, and pr- to come practice the Dharma and where they've helped it with and they've supported the retreat center financially and in uh, many ways. And so when we uh, support the uh, f- uh, uh, so we can either, you know, if we support places like this, it is really important because it, it helps us. We can support it by ourselves or we can encourage other people to uh, support it. And when we do this, this is really great merit for all of us, whether we actually support or whether we are encouraging other people to support because it's creating a place for the activity of the Dharma to last for maybe 400 years or 500 years, 600 years or maybe 1,000 years. And so uh, that is why it is so important. It's a great support for this. If we think about all of us individuals, you know, the individuals uh, don't stay very long. And all those old uh, Dharma teachers, you know, we're sort of flowing on like a river. And so, you know, we need a stable place for all of the Dharma uh, to be held. And so that is why supporting the retreat center is so important. <laughs> So I'd like to thank you all, and now we will have the dedication and aspiration prayers. Yeah.
Und, äh, 